A dead body found yesterday is identified, but was the death accidental, natural, or intentional? That's what authorities are working to determine this evening after a fisherman walked upon a body late yesterday afternoon in East Campbell County. Sheriff Robbie Goins, Chief Deputy Aaron Evans, explains that just before 5 p.m., that's when the call came in that the body of a white male had been found lying along the bank at the edge of the water of Norris Lake in Dokes Creek area. Evans tells WLAF that the body is identified as that of 38-year-old Darren Lee Morrison of Stone Ridge Lane in La Folly. Evans says the death appears suspicious and that he and other law enforcement personnel are treating it as a crime scene. An autopsy is being performed on Morrison's body to determine the exact cause of death. The La Follette Community Hospital was put up for sale some 15 years ago. First, St. Mary's bought the La Follette Hospital from the city. Then, Tanova bought out St. Mary's a couple of years ago. Now, Tanova is selling the hospital. According to La Follette Medical Center CEO and hospital administrator Mark Kane, if approved by stockholders, Tanova's Health Care's parent company, Health Management Associates, will be sold to Community Health Systems, also known as CHS. Jerry Askew is the Senior Vice President for Governmental Relations for the new prospective buyers and says that the sale has been in the works for months and once completed, the $7.6 billion sale will make CHS one of the largest, if not the largest, hospital organization in the country. That $7.6 billion price tag includes CHS taking on the seller's approximately $3.7 billion of debt. Located in the Nashville area, CHS is one of the largest publicly traded hospital companies in the United States. Through its subsidiaries, CHS currently owns, leases, and operates 135 hospitals in 29 states with a total of around 20,000 licensed beds. After the sale is completed, CHS would own or operate around 206 hospitals in 29 states with a total bed count of more than 41,000. Askew said he expects the sale to have no negative impacts on a local level in La Follette. Askew tells WLAF that if nothing else, it will have a positive impact because if this sale is approved by stockholders, the combined company will be the largest hospital in the nation. Adding that it was too soon to know if any major changes were planned. He says that that will be something that is up to the new owners after the sale is finished. La Follette Mayor Mike Stanfield tells WLAF that he hoped once the sale is completed that it would result in a positive impact for the city and its people. If approved by stockholders, the sale is expected to close during the first quarter of next year. The city of Caraville settled with its former city recorder. Yesterday evening, or rather Monday evening, the Caraville mayor of Board of Aldermen voted to accept a settlement offer in the lawsuit regarding former city recorder Cheryl Ivey during a special call meeting. Ivey's attorney, Dave Dunaway, tells WLAF News that the $48,000 settlement was a fair one. Dunaway adds that it's a fair settlement and compensates for the year of her professional life 
that they took away from her. According to Dunaway, the lawsuit and the settlement was a result of Ivy being unfairly terminated from her position as city recorder on April 22nd. The original lawsuit alleged that Ivy was fired in retaliation by the city and that its mayor, Chris Stanley, manipulated events in order to terminate her position as city recorder. During the special call meeting, the board also approved this year's Christmas bonuses. Full-time and part-time employees were approved for a $300 bonus, while firefighters will receive a $50 bonus. Members of the Planning Commission and the Board of Mayor and Aldermen will receive a $100 bonus. The Board of Education meets at a special venue Thursday night. The school board holds its regular monthly meeting Thursday at 6 p.m. at the central office on Valley Street in Jacksboro. That's across from the Methodist Church. Only one Campbell County High School basketball team won Tuesday night. It was Jellicoe. The Blue Devils improved to 3-1 and one on the young season after whipping Oakdale 82-71. to The Lady Blue Devils lost their game with the Oakdale Lady Eagles. At Campbell County High School, Anderson County swept the Cougars and the Lady Cougars. In the elementary division, Christian Academy won for the tenth time on the season with a win over Elk Valley. David Graham has more sports coming up in his sports report a little later in this newscast. And finally this evening, it's free meal night at the Trinity Baptist Church. That's until 6.30. The church is on South 12th Street at East Beach Street. Looking ahead, on Thursday, it's meals in a pinch night. That's from 6 to 7 at the Jellicoe Highway Church of God, while the La Follette Methodist Church hosts a free meal on Friday from 5 to 6.30. So there are several opportunities for those of you that would like to have a good meal. And that's the latest news for this Wednesday. We'll be back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department in just a moment. And it's time now to take a look at the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. And it looks like today we have six names on our report, beginning with Danny Wayne Antrican. 57 of Morristown brought here for a court date. 47-year-old Clark Leslie Carroll of Grantsboro Road in La Follette for aggravated assault. Zachary C. Carroll, age 20 of Grantsboro Road in La Follette for aggravated assault. 30-year-old Timothy Scott Comer of Lewis White Lane in La Follette for falsification of the result of a drug test. 26-year-old Holly Mae Hamilton of Indian River Boat Dock in Jacksboro for violation of probation. And our last name today, David Wayne Odell, 35, of Sharps Lane in Caraville for violation of probation. And we thank you for joining us for our portion of the news this evening. Our program continues we got lots of things coming your way throughout the evening and throughout tomorrow morning. So you stay right here, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Hey, Big Josh with you on this Wednesday evening looking at our birthdays and anniversaries. Our birthday and anniversary club is brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. They're located in the Food Lion Center. Hey, stop by. Tell them you heard about them right here at the old radio station. We do that. Our birthdays today, Juanita Baird is celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday to you, uh, Juanita. And Kathy Brooks is celebrating today. Happy birthday to Kathy and Bobby Russell, 27 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Bobby. And Haley Carroll is 11 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Haley. And looking back at yesterday, Chris Park celebrated a birthday. Happy birthday to Chris. We hope all of you are having a good day and had a good day. Now listen, if you're celebrating either your birthday 
or your anniversary today and for some reason we don't have your name on our list we'd love to have it in here because that's the only way that you can qualify to be in the drawing that we have each Friday and you would be eligible to win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two from your friends here at WLAF and the folks at Eastside Pizza and Deli. Hey, good Lord willing, see you tomorrow at about this same time. Good night.